Yes. Hi there. Welcome to the Biz Communication Show. I'm your host, Bill Lampton, the Biz Communication Guy, bringing us communication tips and strategies that will boost our business because we share winning words and ways. Today, we have a highly qualified guest to help us do that. Our guest is Ken Fainer, coming from us to us from Ormond Beach, Florida. He's the owner of The Social Glue, and that is creatively spelled G-L-O-O. He's owner of The Social Glue, a social media and email marketing company. He has over 25 years of experience with traditional marketing channels, such as newspaper, radio, and TV cable advertising. Unlike many marketing companies who add social media to their list of services, The Social Glue is a social media marketing, email marketing company first. The Social Glue's main focus is social media management for businesses. And I've seen Ken's work, and I can tell you it's top quality. Ken works with local businesses, startups, national, international companies, and associations, supporting their social media needs. The scope of his work includes email marketing, social media, including Facebook management and design, Twitter management and design, LinkedIn management, YouTube video creation, and more. What a versatile guy. So join me in welcoming Ken Fainer. Ken, welcome to the Biz Communication Show. Well, thank you for the kind words, Bill. I appreciate that. And I'm glad to be here. Terrific to host you again. Ken, as we look at social media, any one of us, there are so many selections that we could make. And it seems that almost every week or two, there is some new social media item that comes along, as we say, that new shiny object. And so the question that I have personally and professionally, and I know other people, our viewers and our podcast listeners have is, how in the heck do I, do I make a choice? I mean, I know I can't do all of them and nobody could. Right. It would not be time effective, cost effective, and you'd just be scattering yourself. So instead of a a larger view, we need a a, a more focused view. Yeah. How do we decide, please, which social media we should be very active on? Well, when I sit down with a client for the first time, that's usually what we're deciding. And what I ask them is, where are your clients? Where are your customers? Because that's what's most important. There's no sense to be on Twitter if your customers aren't on Twitter. There's no sense to be on Instagram if your customers aren't there. If you find out your customers are on Instagram, then yes, that's where you want to be. And sometimes they have no idea. And I usually ask them, hey, pick up the phone and call a couple of key customers that you can ask that question and get a feel for what's going on. Not super scientific, I know. Um, you know, a lot of times what happens with clients, they say, oh, I need to be on Instagram because my son says that's where everybody is today. And their son for their generation might be exactly right. That's where everybody he knows is on Instagram. But for the dad's business, maybe not so much. Um, but it, it could still work. The second thing I ask besides where are your customers because that's what you want to do is to be able to communicate with your customers and potential customers. I also ask, you know, what is your story? Because the story you're going to be telling in some cases is suited more for particular um, platforms. For example, if you're a, a business to business um, type um, of company and you're, you're selling services to other businesses or products to other businesses, LinkedIn might be perfect for you. Um, if your product doesn't really translate well to imagery, then you can probably leave Instagram out because Instagram, they don't want you to write a whole lot. You know, you can maybe tell a little bit about the photo that you're posting or the video you're posting, but it's more about viewing and seeing the image or, or seeing the video. 
that's what they're more interested about on Instagram. So you have to think about how are you going to be telling your story and what platforms do that well. So that's, that's how I would start is first of all, um, you know, who, where are your customers? What platforms are they on most of the time? And then, you know, what is your story? That's advice I haven't heard before. Maybe our viewers and listeners haven't heard. It's wonderful advice. Find out where the customers are. Otherwise, you're just sending something out with your, your key customers and your key prospects not saying it. So that, that makes very good sense. And it also makes sense along with that, I believe you've indicated, to find out where we fit. Mm -hmm. We just someplace. I, I, I tried Instagram for a while. I'll have to say for me, and it, it's great for many people. I, I uh, put some short videos on there, but I never got into reels. So there, there's certain places we fit and our, our business fits and our style fits and certain places it doesn't. So I would guess that plays into it too. Yes, exactly. And one thing I say real quick is that you want to start out small. You, If you want to start out just on Facebook and that makes sense, start out on Facebook, get that going, get active on there, and then add another social media platform. Don't try to just start doing everything at once. Um, you'll burn yourself out. Um, you know, that's why sometimes people hire me. <laughs> It's because they let me get burnt out. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, that's that's really part of, um, you know, ramping up um, and adding other platforms that make sense. But get the first one right. You know, make sure you start out getting it right. And that will help you be able to translate those stories over to other platforms. And you get accustomed to posting and to interacting with others. Since you mentioned Facebook, I'm curious about another item, and that is, I, like many people, have a Facebook personal page, and mm -hmm. I also have a Facebook business page. Now, it, it's my understanding, and I want to check this with you, is it is it out of place for you to put any business items on your Facebook personal page? I've even heard that Facebook and this might be rumor, but I've heard that Facebook might ban you if you try to put too much business item, business stuff on your your Facebook personal page. What what's the case on that, Ken? Um, you're you're correct. Um, Facebook, you know, most people probably didn't read the agreement when they signed on to Facebook. There's probably 20, 30 pages and you just usually say, I agree. Oh, and, yes. And you move on. Um, one of those things is that you're that that's a personal page and that's how you're going to use it. Um, and that's they have the right if you start using it for something else. Um, I had a I had a good friend um, that he he's he's a big Tupperware distributor and he has a lot of people under him and a lot of the people that were selling Tupperware, hopped on Facebook and started selling it to all their friends on Facebook. And all their posts became everything about Tupperware. And they started getting warnings from Facebook, you know, saying you can't do this, you know. And so it and it depends if if you've got something that you want about your business that you really want to share with family and friends. That's all well and good because you're going to be making other posts in there that are family related, personal related. As long as it, your face, your personal Facebook page doesn't all of a sudden just become a business page. Um, and that's it's real tempting because Facebook on your business side isn't showing it like they used to show it to you're, you're lucky if one or two percent of the people who've liked your business Facebook page see a post um, because they're now pay to play. You, they want you to buy advertising or boost posts or things like that to get your message out there. And on the personal side, you make a personal post, it gets out there. Um, so they, a lot of people start having that temptation to start posting more and more on their, their personal page, but they can get in trouble if they do that. So doing that occasionally would be okay. Right. Yeah. I think you answered a question <laughs> that, that I had not pre-programmed, pre but certainly comes to mind. 
And that is, I've been seeing very little response on my my Facebook business page. And I suppose you've answered it and that I'll start getting response when I start paying for for ads, which are not expensive. No, you can if you if you pick a certain demographic and a certain geographic area, you know, five dollars might get you, you know, a couple hundred views. You know, uh, if you're trying to do the whole country. That five dollars is going to go really fast, (laughs) you know. So if you if you limit it geographically and you limit it age wise and stuff like that, and, and for your type of um, uh, posts that you're making, you could do that because only certain. This is really crazy, but realtors can't um, can't use age demographics. It's crazy, and you can't use economic demographics. In a lot of other businesses, you can use age and economic demographics, but realtors can't. They say it voids the Facebook's view of um, fair housing agreements. So if you've got a million dollar property and you're a realtor and you're posting it on Facebook and you want to boost it, you're going to be boosting it to, you know, 15 year olds. You're going to be boosting it to people that don't have anywhere near the income. And I'm going like, this is crazy. It's it's it, you should be able to still do that. But Fair Housing says, nope, you got to show it to everybody. We've been going just a few minutes and I've learned plenty already. <laughs> I know for certain our viewers and listeners are learning along with me. Ken, I want to question you next about the topics which are advisable to include and the topics which are no-nos. We'll be back after just a few seconds. Do you wish you felt confident about giving speeches? Do you want to deal with difficult people constructively? And what about becoming more persuasive in sales? Then keep listening now to Dr. Bill Lampton. He spent 20 years in management, so he knows the communication skills you need for success. I urge you to call the Biz Communication Guy today for a no-cost but very valuable 30-minute discussion about your communication challenges. Call now, 678-316-4300. Again, that's 678-316-4300. We're with Ken Fainer of The Social Glue, and a couple of seconds ago, Ken, I said there's a key question I want to ask you, and that is, what are the topics that we should avoid on social media? I'll have to say that, yes, we have free speech, but I've sometimes wanted to post on there that we seem to, some people seem to interpret that as free screech. <laughs> it does. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, Give us four or five or whatever number you want to topics that we should at the at the risk of our or to protect our our reputation and our image and our brand. What topics should we avoid on social media? Okay. well, first, let me I'm going to give you a a little bit broader example in just a second or my thoughts on that. But, you know. Social media, the whole idea is, especially if you're business and you're trying to build your brand, um, is to become that expert in your field, to be, um, you know, liked and um, valued and your, your thoughts appreciated. And that's really what building your brand on social media is, is all about, is becoming that thought leader in your field. And that takes me to the, the part that I w- want to bring up your field. You want to stay in your wheelhouse. You want to stay. If, if, if your business is, is, has certain services, um, has certain products, you want to be talking about those things. Um, I will say, for example, and I've known people that this has happened to they're they've created something new and in their industry and they need to get it, you know, approved. And so maybe that's going to, in, in, you know, take some time and they're going to have to maybe go to Congress. They're going to have to get some type of government approval, you know, and it's fine to tell that story. 
but stay positive about what you're doing. Don't get into a political rat race. And I think that's where most people, especially around election time, all of a sudden, the the personal pages start filling up with, a, like you say, screeching. Um, that's not what your business page should be about. Your business page should be about your business, how you run your business, some sneak peeks behind the scenes of your business, and really staying in your own wheelhouse. And that's, that's, I think if you do that, you don't have to worry about the topics out there because those topics really aren't in your wheelhouse unless you are a political pundit or you have, um, you know, some association with some say controversial topic. Um, and that's what you do for a living. Um, but business wise, staying in your side, your own wheelhouse is going to keep you safe and it's going to help you become that thought leader and that expert. You mentioned in politics, we have 15 more months of a <laughs> national political race. If we think it's been heated already on social media, we've got 15 more months of it. Right. One, one viewpoint I have is that we have to be very careful about the humor that we mm -hmm. add on, on uh, any of the social media, because you and I know from our long experience in communication that humor, when you're talking with somebody face to face, they can catch the nuances in the humor. Right. But when something is written, it can be interpreted so many ways. And I'll have to use an example as to the type of humor that I think is very risky. I saw on Facebook yesterday, someone posting a joke and the joke, the butt of the joke was elderly people. Mm -hmm. Now, anybody who reads that is going to have some elderly person in their life. They might be elderly. Right. Are their parents? Are their grandparents? There might be serious illness involved with that. And to me, that's the kind of humor that might go over if you're in your golf foursome. Right. But we we have to remember that we might think something is is quite innocent and won't won't offend anybody, but we need to look beyond maybe our first view and and just be extra cautious. So let's get to the positive side. That's that's more on the what not to do. And you've been very helpful on that. And when, I'll, I'll just briefly, that's one of the reasons people hire me because a lot of times they're focusing on their business and the story that they think they should be telling might be not necessarily controversial, like posting some bad joke, but they, they may be missing the real story that they should be telling. Um, and that's where I come in and help them realize that they have more of a story usually to tell than they realize themselves. Excellent. And all the world loves a story if it's yes. the right story. <laughs> right, right. Yes. And I can help them avoid the bad stories. <laughs> when you're dealing with a client and you have many of them, you not only talk about what not to do, but you talk about what to do. So give us a, a thumbnail overview of what you consider best practices. And if you want to take an example of LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, give us three or four of the, the really best practices, which might even run counter to what we've been thinking all along. Yeah. Um, I would say best practices start with knowing your platform that you're on. Um, Facebook is different than Twitter. Twitter is different than Instagram. Um, they're all have their own nuances and you you need to understand them. I would, I would say like Twitter is going to a very loud, um, kind of rowdy bar, you know, and Facebook is maybe more like a family dinner, sitting down for a family dinner, or it should be. <laughs> and then, LinkedIn, you might look at LinkedIn and you might say, um, that's more of a, a really professional, maybe, you know, happy hour at a jazz 
club or something, you know, where you're just chit chatting and you're having nice casual conversation. Um, that's how I usually try to think of the different platforms. And you need to understand each platform and the type of language and the nuances that are involved with each platform. So that would be the very first best practice. Um, I see people do what they do wrong all the, a lot of times is they will go on and they're using a, uh, some software that allows them to post on all their social media platforms, but they're basing it on what they say on Facebook a lot of times. And so they'll, they'll write their, their post and they'll hit the send button and it goes out to Facebook. It goes out to Twitter. It goes out to LinkedIn. Maybe it even goes to Instagram, but you sit there and you read the post in Twitter and they use too many characters. And now it goes dot, dot, dot FB, you know, or whatever. And because it was originally coming from Facebook and now it's going to Twitter and people on Twitter don't want to go to Facebook to read the rest of your post. So that's definitely not good. Um, the other thing to know, um, and a, a lot of people don't realize this, but the different social media companies have different algorithms. And if you're making, say, a video post and you post a link to your YouTube channel, you're going to get less views on most of the social media platforms because they don't want you to leave to go over to YouTube. So you get more views if you upload the video into the particular channel. This is true for Facebook. I believe it's true for Twitter. I'm pretty sure it is. But I know it's also true for LinkedIn. You'll notice that if you upload your video into LinkedIn, you'll get a whole lot more people seeing it than if you put a link in there to it on YouTube. Now, what I suggest kind of as a best practice for clients is do both. Start with that link. Now, don't use the same text in your post and everything, but start with that link. Write, write what the link is about and what they're going to learn by clicking on that link and get people over to YouTube if possible, because that is going to help you with your YouTube algorithm, which is important. And then a couple of days later, maybe a week later, upload it onto your, the other channel, whether it's LinkedIn or, or Facebook, upload it there and then write a little something different about it and let people view it because they're going to see, you're going to get a lot more views there. Um, so I would, I, I kind of, that's kind of a best practice I use with my clients. Um, I repost and I reuse um, information a lot of times. And so I don't see that as breaking any rules or anything like that, because first of all, LinkedIn didn't show it to everybody, for example, or Facebook doesn't show it to everybody when you, when you share that link anyway. So now you're coming back, you're sharing it, except you're uploading it. And now they're going to push it out to more people. So um, that's, that's kind of one of the best practices that I'm using now because people are trying to find ways to be seen and noticed more and video helps with that. Um, a lot of the channels really will push a video post more than they'll push just a regular post with a link in it. You certainly gave me a tip that I'm going to, to use because I post uh, videos quite frequently. And I believe maybe I had heard that about don't just post the link and think that that will do it. Because I'm, I gather you're saying that LinkedIn doesn't want you taken away from LinkedIn. Right. So if you do that with the link sometime, still upload it. And, and is there any uh, length limit on the videos that we can upload now? Um, I think, I, I, I think LinkedIn might have a 15 minute. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, and in some cases, what I, what I do, I think it is a 15 minute limit. Um, what in some cases, what I do for some clients is for example, uh, a podcast like yourself, I will break them into shorter um, segments yes. and, and upload those individually as extra content. Um, but then I'll start off with, like I say, a link to the original. And then I will also put a link in there saying, and if you want to see the complete video, click here. Makes a lot of sense. And I, those, <laughs> we've already gotten marvelous tips. 
Ken, the old clock on the wall tells me that we need to pull all this together. So I know that people will want to learn more about Ken Fainer and the social glue. So please give us your contact information. Sure. Um, Ken Fainer, it's Ken at the social glue and glue is G L O O dot com. Um, or you can call me 678 358 3680 and visit the website. All my information is there also, the social glue dot com. Thank you. And I do encourage our viewers and listeners if you want social media mastery, this, this is the guy to get in touch with. Thank you. I'm delighted to share also my contact information on YouTube. Yeah, if you go to the search bar and type in my YouTube moniker, Bill Lampton, PhD, it will take you to my YouTube channel where I have over 450 instructional videos. Uh, the majority of them are solo presentations with communication and instruction. But in recent years, more than 75 of them have been interviews of this type with top quality experts. So hit that subscribe button when you're there. Certainly, I, as the biz communication guy, it's quite logical that my website is biz, B-I-Z, bizcommunicationguy.com. And while you're there, notice that you can subscribe to my podcast. So I hope that you will do that as well. I'm very open to talking with you by telephone. My number is 678-316-4300. And I will welcome a call, a, a call that where you can discuss your communication challenges and problems and at no obligation or cost, we can just discover and explore whether I'm the one to assist you with those or whether you need me to refer you to somebody else. So please do give me a call, 678-316-4300. Ken, this has been a marvelous overview of some of the things that we really needed to know and probably shatters what we thought we knew, but that's very helpful. And that's what experts are for. And that's what you are. What would you say to sort of pull together our total conversation today? Well, I'd like to jump back to that one comment I made earlier about staying in your wheelhouse. I mean, you, you know, your business and you want to share that information with people. That's what social media is all about is sharing information that people are going to find of value. And by staying in your wheelhouse, you will become that expert in your field. Um, so that's, that's, I think, would, would wrap everything up. It's going to help you with your storytelling. It's going to help you with understanding, you know, the different platforms that you're on by staying in your wheelhouse and doing what makes sense for your business. Don't go way out there trying to bring in people. You know, it's just a bad marketing idea to just be that shotgun effect, you know, stay in that wheelhouse. Excellent. Thank you again, Ken Fainer, for being with us today. Thanks to those of you who joined us on video and on the podcast. We know that you did learn winning words and ways and tips and strategies that will boost your business. I invite you to be with us for the next edition of the Biz Communication Show. I'm your host, Bill Lampton, the Biz communication guy.